And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to the Flat Out Racing Network's coverage of race number 11 of the sixth season of the Dark Horse Racing Series presented by Troy Lee Designs. We're here tonight under the lights at Worldwide Technology Raceway, more commonly known as Gateway, and probably going to be the term of the track we'll use most of the time here tonight. Rolls off the tongue a little bit easier, but these drivers here, this is legitimately the home stretch. Three races, including tonight, until we crown ourselves a champion. I'm Seth Cole, alongside of Matthew Rodriguez. And Matt, it seems like we're starting to get closer and closer to maybe starting to see the forest through the trees of who the champ's going to be, because here tonight, eight drivers going to take the green flag. One of the drivers not in the field is Rick Ravon. And we've been kind of following the last few weeks, Ravon versus Forsyth. We've had uh, Luis Gonzalez Nunez as kind of a, an outside looking in potential third party for the championship. But with Ravon not in the field here again tonight, it could maybe be a Forsyth versus Nunez, but Nunez has got to get going. He's got to have Forsyth hit some bad luck. Realistically, I think it's more of a kind of Forsyth versus Highsong here at the moment. Jeff Highsong has caught fire as of recent. He has been fast on track, fast everywhere. And realistically, if he could just get himself within that punching distance at Indy, he has a shot. Eight way, a mile and a quarter in length. So uh, a kind of continuation of shorter tracks here. We, of course, uh, last week were at the Iowa Speedway. We've been to phoenix we've been to new hampshire and while it's good news for the fact that we've got five drivers in the field they're still looking for their first win on the season the bad news is the craig forsyth his numbers at the shorter tracks have been really good two runner-up finishes and of course that victory last week at iowa so uh, the rest of the field's got to be on their toes here tonight because that 27 even though he may not look like he's running the fastest in the early maybe mid stages of this race we always seem to find him up at the front late yeah, I think realistically for our, really our tighter title contenders here, Jeff Hysong and Luis Gonzalez Nunez, they really need to be fighting more of Jeff Hysong rather than the race, while Eric Schaus, uh, Gary Corley, uh, Eric Peterson, they can really go out and try to win this race, but it's kind of the two championship favorites here, they really need to play damage control and try to gain as much distance as possible on Craig Forsyth. Six drivers took time. Joseph Morales, Joe McAdory going to bring up the fourth and final row as Eric Schaus going to lead us to the green. Rather interesting formation as they came to the line there with Schaus. I think that's what he was trying to do was kind of take the middle to have an, a lane up to the top side for a good Oh, Gary Corley! Forsyth's tagged! And there's a big oh, pile no. up. Oh, gracious. Forsyth's up and over. Is Joe McAdore going to give him a little pushover? Oh, no, no. <laughs> going to drive around him. Well, that's huge for Forsyth. Now he has to toe back. He's going to be a few laps down. I think someone else was also caught up in that, aside from the 7, 3, 12, and 27, because I thought I saw another car dart towards the inside. And I was going to bring this up, but I didn't expect we were going to talk about it this early, the fact that I was watching a number of these guys in practice, and it seemed like that trouble spot was going to be off of turn two. So a lot of cars really sla snapping loose on exit. I think it actually was Luis Gonzalez Nunez. He managed to go high to avoid Gary Corley. Then he got really loose off of two, started to arc back down, went through the grass, and as soon as he hit that access road, I think we saw it one of the last seasons with uh, Charles Teed going over that. It's almost like a little ramp, almost like a jump, and it unsettles the car, spun him on around, he didn't hit anything. But again, just kind of not the sketchy moment that you want. But you could even see right there, even before we hit that access road, the, the ground there, the infield on the back straightaway, anything but smooth. Yeah, that's the thing where Gateway is un unfortunately uh, kind of an old track. At least the scan that we have on iRacing is a very old version of the track, which has its bumps, has its uh, maybe less massaged parts. Now, we saw on that initial start, Eric Schaus electing to kind of jump up there to the top side when they entered into turn one, apparently did not want the bottom. That might have been a big reason why Gary Corley's car snapped around. Is that the low banking in the corner? Is that cold tires? Is it a combination of both? It's really just a combination of both. Obviously, you want to set yourself up to have the optimal entry through the corner where Eric Schaus jumped all the way up to the top. He was still pretty much almost full throttle. 
dives down the track, tries to hit that first seam, and kind of stays in the middle. Now, I noticed that Gary Corley, he had a more shallow entry, and he probably was trying to still carry that same amount of speed, but he actually was dipping lower than the leader right underneath the, uh, really, uh, I'm trying to remember what that is, almost like the sealer line, and ended up just sliding up the track. Craig Forsyth in the 27, remember last week at Iowa, ended up hitting the wall not too far into that race, ended up having to take on the faster pair in the early going, and certainly looks like he's going to have to take the faster pair on very early on here at Gateway, as that car never was able to come back onto its wheels, had to take the teleport to Pit Rose, going to lose a few laps as a result of that, and going to have to rely on maybe some cautions to get some lucky dogs and get back on the lead lap, so a faster yeah. pair in the hole and minus some laps and not even five laps into tonight's event. You know whose stock is raising? That would be the 18. <laughs> That's it. I, this is kind of that point where I, I cannot stress this enough, but Jeff Hysong has been on a tear. Really, the last five, six races, he has not finished outside of the top five in five of six races. And really, is, realistically, that sixth race was the Phoenix dogleg, and uh, he finished six just outside of that top five. This is a huge boost to him where... Again, it's not going to be, uh, with the small car count on the field, it's not going to be a huge points game. But, hey, you I think you get, I'm trying to remember how many points, even if you have to finish second or third here, as he's been doing the last couple weeks, third would be at least 35 points. And then you usually get about three bonus points as long as you don't hit anything, if you lead a couple of laps. And the position that uh, Jeff, or Craig Forsyth would finish right now would entitle him to 24 points, but... If Jeff Hysong was able to get the, there in the lead or second place, about 40 to 50 points you're playing with. So definitely a big jump. As we go back green, Eric Schaus, winner from a couple of weeks ago at Homestead Miami Speedway, gets us back underway. And in the case of Jeff Hysong, whether you gain 35 points, you gain 5 points. A gain is still a gain. He's 94 points behind Craig Forsyth coming into tonight for the points lead. And really, I think that tonight... And in two weeks, when we get to Twin Ring Motegi, it's going to be about making it a manageable gap with that double points race at Indianapolis. Because you know this, Matt. When we get to that Indy 500 weekend, we see a lot of drivers come and race in that event. It's the big one at the end of the season. A lot of one-off drivers, usually the biggest field on the season, with double points and a lot of positions up for grabs. If you can at least get yourself within striking distance, if you're high song, the double points can help you capitalize to win a championship. And the big thing is kind of looking back here, it's the mentality of people who are fighting for a championship where, uh, Seth, I know you know it as well as I do, the mentality when it's coming down to your counting points, your counting positions, you're making up those win conditions for yourself. You know, okay, I've got to finish here, or I've got to at least make sure I don't wreck and I at least finish here if all else goes wrong to make sure I still clinch this. Some people thrive in that scenario. Some people, unfortunately, they may have the best of seasons, but that's where they crumple. Right now, I'm seeing Jeff Hysong be one of those guys who are really thriving in that kind of situation, who realistically, woo, man, Hysong did not look comfortable on the wow. bottom of that track. Not at all. That's it. I'm Yelp. starting to think that it's, I, I really think it's just how the track is, or at least maybe how the setup is, just a little bit loose on that bottom. Maybe the tire's not fully heated up yet, but uh, he did not look comfortable just anywhere. Well, Luis Gonzalez Nunez made a pass on Eric Peterson for third, was immediately crossed over. Peterson went back to the final spot in the podium, and now Nunez back into P3 and now appears to be driving away. You know, folks, when they end up looking at the, the racing here at this track, may not be able to take in just how complex this racetrack is on both ends. It's almost kind of like a Darlington in a way with the fact that one and two is more of sweeping corner, but three and four, it's a much tighter angle that you have to make it around uh, coming around to the start finish line. So two entirely different areas of the racetrack that you have to have your car set up for. Yeah, it's one of those things where the corners are deceiving. The the track is really deceiving. It has long straightaways. It makes it feel like you should be able to carry a lot more speed than these corners. And turn one is so many or so much different than turn three. And trying to set yourself up, I mean, obviously you see those rumble strips down there. The common theory is, okay, I need to put my car as close to those rumble strips as possible. You touch those rumble strips with the left side tire of his car, it will go around on you. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That's it. We saw it last season, and even in practice, some of the guys are touching it, and you just saw the back end of the car step right on out and just get deposited to the wall. 
Riding on board with Jeff Heisong, looking ahead to Eric Schaus. You can see he's playing with the gears, courtesy of our onboard. Shifting down to fifth, going up to sixth every now and then, mostly on the back straightaway. Not going to shift to the high gear this time, going to stay in fifth gear as Schaus running right up against that wall. And the entry to turn three opens up the door, and Jeff Heisong's going to try it. It's got a bit of a run here. Uh, I think that's one of the things where... I, I'm seeing him kind of back out, and I think he's backing out just because of how unsettled the car feels on that bottom line. But that's one of the cool things where I think you'll see later in the race with Gateway being uh, primarily a one-lane track where you're really going to have to try and time your passes and time when you want to do things. You're going to see a lot of drivers just try to stick their nose in there. I mean, uh, different drivers have different responses to what they see. I mean, some drivers, you just put the nose there and you get them thinking they'll have a different line area in the corner and they'll let you have that space. And even if they don't want to take it, you put yourself, you pretty much compromise your corner to make sure they have room. And that gives them a good exit where, let's say, some guy puts his nose there and they'll still run their same line. That's good and bad where, hey, those kind of like scare tactics aren't going to work on him, but <laughs> it, it, it's a lot more risk. One thing that we haven't talked about yet, and I think we're going to be talking about not too far away from now, is this pit road. We've seen, uh. really in the last, what, two months or so, pit road has played just as much a factor in the outcome of the race as the racetrack itself. I mean, even go back to last week, Eric Schaus looked like he was going to be one of the contenders for the victory, spun out on pit road exit. He's trying to get some redemption here tonight. Uh, a few weeks ago at Kansas, we saw Charles Teed, who was running the top three most of the night. He missed the entrance to pit road. And this pit road has got a very similar type access road to Homestead, Miami, where you've got to enter in turn three, make your way all the way around to turn four before there you see that uh, enclosed wall pit lane. And I was watching a number of these guys. Actually, Eric Schaus was one driver I was watching that was practicing green flag pit stops. He made it onto pit road safely the lap after he missed the entrance to pit road. So even the guy that's out in front right now, when he was practicing green flag pit stops, had a mistake in practice. Yeah, see, this is one of those tracks where if you think back to Homestead Miami and how many pit road issues we had there with guys just overrunning it. Homestead Miami had at least a little bit of grass runoff. So if you did hit it, it wasn't the end of the world. You just kind of hit the grass a little bit and you weren't just flying off. Here, there's not very much of a runoff area. There isn't very much of an escape road. There, The good news is pit road access is a little bit paved in. So if you do overrun it a little bit, you won't you know, immediately take anything out. But it's kind of one of those, it's got a huge wall on the way. And if you don't fix it really quick, you're going to end up just driving into the barrier. So... Uh, not not great as I'm hearing some uh, action back there with uh, Gary Corley and co. Corley and Joe McAdory, <laughs> they've been in a pretty good battle for the fifth position. We've got kind of uh, three good battles for first, third, and fifth going on here. Uh, Joseph Morales riding in that seventh position. And Craig Forsythe, for those wondering, he is on the racetrack, is still running. He did have to take on his faster pair. The only driver that does not have that mulligan still in his hip pocket. And he is currently running two laps down. So going to have to rely on a couple of yellow flags if he's going to get back uh, into the running of this thing and not be leaving Gateway here tonight in the eighth position. Gateway's actually been a mainstay track on the schedule ever since season two, but guess what, Matt? We're gonna make history here tonight. A driver will get their first ever win at Gateway in the Dark Horse Racing Series as all four previous race winners not in the field here tonight. They would include Nick DeGroote, Robert Maleska III, Henry Bennett, and the defending winner, Matt Wagner. Weird FRN fact, Seth has actually never attended a Gateway Dark Horse any or racing series race. That's He's actually, actually never, true. That's you're right. Every, every time we get here, you're always on a different, either on a different broadcast or on vacation. So obviously nice to have you here. Yeah, it's the first time that I've been here. <laughs> and uh, and as, as you heard, only going to say the actual name of the track one time. Oh, I've got stories about that. If uh, Oh, we've, well, there are, there are <laughs> if we, stories. If we there dig deep, stories. <laughs> we've got stories. <laughs> one thing as well that I kind of was looking at here that took me by surprise, in those four previous Gateway events, the scheduled distance was 120 laps, 140 laps here tonight. So just how much of an X factor do those extra 20 circuits make in terms of potential pit strategy? Obviously, you've got to factor in 
any strategy that was in place from a couple years or a couple seasons back is going to be modified a little bit because obviously a tires have to go a little bit longer fuel has to be adjusted as accordingly i know in previous seasons right front wear has been a little bit of a noticeable concern but not extremely Obviously, different conditions tonight because I know last season we were not seeing this kind of instability on the bottom line, on the bottom really middle line in throughout the corners. And plus, it seems like cold tires are really going to take its toll here, at least late into the race. I was curious, just looked back to see if any of the drivers in tonight's race had a podium in their career here at Gateway. Two of them did. It was last season. Jeff Heisong finished in second. Luis Gonzalez Nunez finished in third. That's where those two are currently running behind Eric Schaus. Let's say I remember, uh, I'm trying to remember what season it was. Uh, I remember it was, I don't think it was season four. It had to be, actually it may have been season four. Um, remember it was Charles Teed and who was it? Remember it was an old favorite that I can't remember the name of to save my life. I think it may have been. Um, who it was. I can't remember who it was for the life of me. But I remember Charles Steed got into a late breaking match trying to see who could stay in the corner for longest and uh, I think they both lost out on that one. Uh, possibly Maleska? I don't think it was Maleska. He's, he's done well every time he's gotten here. Me? I think it was Alex Van or Alexander Van de Sant. Ah. I think... Again, it was one of the races where you were in attendance. That would have that would have either been season two or three then. More than likely season three. I think it was three. three. Yeah. I remember Van de Sant was fast all race, and it finally got down to one of those final restarts. And Van de Sant was... I think he pushed Teed low and pushed him all the way to the entrance of the corner, and pretty much they went three wide, and they ended up both in the wall. I, I, there's both some hurt feelings after that one but <laughs> that just shows you restarts are really the game time for this obviously long runs as you're seeing now jeff high song and also luis gonzalez you just slowly close in on eric Schaus. but restarts and obviously long runs waiting for any tire wear any tire fall off that's really your big times to make your moves past that you've kind of have to play it strategically and try to save your stuff a little bit preparing for later in the run so that kind of just segues into the question I was going to ask you. At this point in time now, with everybody kind of slotted into their respective positions, is this now tire conservation mode? Or do, do you can you possibly gain time with your approach to these corners as opposed to the driver you're trying to catch? Obviously, if you're within striking distance like Jeff Hysong, you're obviously pushing a little bit more than you probably originally were. Or if you're like someone like Treg Forsyth, who currently is just he's riding around trying to save his stuff but obviously not in full save mode just trying to pull competitive laps if you're Jeff Hysong you're trying to just run down Eric Schaus if you're Lu Luis Gonzalez Nunez I don't think I'd be really pushing that aggressively because obviously I'm seeing Hysong push himself trying to get up to Schaus Schaus is going to have to push himself to fight off Hysong honestly if I let these guys battle side by side for maybe a lap or two they'll just slowly come on back to me I don't have to really push myself and I'll have fresher tires with lower tire toe as we mentioned, uh, this is one of the uh, the smaller ovals, mile and a quarter at Gateway, and uh, two of the previous shorter tracks that we've been to this season. Uh, of course, at New Hampshire, and then a couple weeks later at the Milwaukee Mile. The guy that we're on board with, Luis Gonzalez Nunez, took both of those checkered flags, and something I'm noticing here, not a whole lot of wheel motion. Very smooth there, making sure not to wear those tires down, because... How smooth you make it through a corner can actually play into just how much grip you're going to have as he's taking a good look up ahead at this battle now for the lead. Song feels it's time to challenge for the top spot. Yeah, Schaus looked a little bit shocked that he pushed it in that corner. He ended up going a little bit higher up. Actually helped his exit a lot. I think Song is really trying to push that low lane, but unfortunately that low lane just scrubs off so much momentum and kind of leaves you vulnerable in the third place. You see Luis Gonzalez Nunez slowly work his way up. See if he's going to be able to clear as he will not be in the preferred line, but he does indeed slide up into P2. So Luis Gonzalez Nunez biding his time, picking his moment, and striking when the iron's hot. He's now going to see if he can reel in Eric Schaus for the top position. But given a lot of stats here from previous gateway races, I'll give you another one that maybe Eric Schaus isn't going to like. 
in the four previous races we've run here, the driver that has led the most laps has only gone on to win the race twice. Uh, honestly, I, if I'm a leader, I wouldn't want to hear that. <laughs> no, no, probably not. <laughs> But obviously, you know how much of a threat Luis Gonzalez Nunez is on this track. But here's the thing. Now the kind of roles got reversed. Right now, if I'm Eric Schaus, I want <laughs> I want Heisong to really start pushing aggressively on Luis Gonzalez Nunez. And I want them to start fighting where, hey, they're slowly going to start falling back to me if they do that. Obviously, it looks like the ship has sailed now as Luis Gonzalez Nunez slowly starts working on Eric Schaus. You know, we talked at the top of the program about the Jeff Heisong scenario to points leader Craig Forsyth. Uh, let's talk Nunez, because I think he might still have a shot here. He's 136 points out, but with Craig Forsyth having his issues here tonight, we know Heisong's in a position to gain points. Nunez also is and, and could maybe have himself mathematically in the hunt by the time we get to Indianapolis. But with only three races remaining, is the 14 in a must win here tonight? Honestly, I'm thinking even with the 14, if the 14 even wins tonight, I still don't think it's going to be enough. I really think that Luis Gonzalez Nunez might be truly out of this. See, Eric Schaus comes down the pit road now. He is really taking that conservatively. Just and that may be the name of the game tonight. Just taking pit road conservatively that you're not either speeding or overrunning the uh, pit road entrance. You can carry as much speed as you want through that access road as long as you bring it down to the 45 mile per hour at pit speed at that yellow cone with the white line stretched across there at the entrance of pit lane. Now Jeff Heisong going to come down pit lane. Ooh, got to be careful. Don't want to get those tires off in the grass because there's no grip there. Yeah, I'm noticing that I think Luis Gonzalez Jr. is trying to push the pit road entrance just a little bit faster but unfortunately, with it being almost one lane in the pit road, it's kind of hard to take a full advantage out. So, Nunez behind High Song. Eric Peterson also came in behind those two. Oh, man, I gotta watch those stairs. Lead over to Joe McAdory. You gotta watch those stairs on pit road. They will jump out and grab you. McAdory looks like he's gonna come down pit road this time. Let's see if Joseph Morales is also pitting. Yes, he is. Oh, Gonzalez! He ends up spinning on the pit road exit. Look out! Ooh. But it's a good thing you're a ghost car when you're on pit road. Otherwise, the 36 would have been impaled right there. Yeah, realistically, he was trying to beat uh, Jeff Heisung out of pit road and cautions out. Got a caution. Yes, we do. Oh, I think it's... it was... No, it was Eric Peterson. Oh, he crashed on pit road exit. On pit road, no front wing, and for, what, the fourth straight week, pit road has <laughs> taken uh, out another contender? He was almost on the winning edge of that last week. My God, That's it was Eric Schaus who actually messed up pit road last week and right. pretty much handed the weight, went away. Man, he just There's... went in like a long dart. Oh, wow. That thing snapped really, really aggressively. Did. And it didn't even look like he got on throttle that hard. Like, he barely got above 90. Pit limiter? Could I that have been a transition from pit I limiter think it was... to throwing it into gear? I don't see pit limiter on on his steering wheel, so... Huh. Yeah, no Here's pit limiter. Board, right. Take a listen with the 36. It may have been when he was exiting pit road, he saw Luis Gonzalez Nunez come across his nose, and I saw him jerk the car out of the way and he may have been focused on that so when he was wow. doing his exit he was may have just been a little bit thrown off i noticed that he lost it as soon as he shifted the second thing just came to a dead stop too there was no forward motion after going up into that outside wall it's a heavy impact and well craig forsyth will no longer be the only one that'll have to use a faster pair 36 will certainly be in that category as uh, he wasn't even able to drive it back to pit lane so he's going to lose a couple of laps with that toe and i believe at the time but i will say if you're if you're jeff high song if you're luis gonzalez nunez if you're luis gonzalez nunez you're counting your chickens you're you're happy that this happened i mean that whole pit road spin could have been really costly for him and hey this basically just erased everything he would have lost but if you're jeff high song and luis gonzalez nunez you're seeing that craig forsyth moves up one position and that one position is just a lot of points that you're just kind of losing here. He went from effectively 24 race points to 26 race points. And it may sound like two points is not a big deal. But unfortunately, when you're 
deficit is around 90 to 100. Those two points are everything. Absolutely. Every point matters, whether you're gaining them or losing them, especially with the point system here with these Indy cars. I, I was going back and checking, and yes, with the 312 and the 60 coming pit road when they did and the caution flying, uh, everybody had managed to get back on to the lead lap, including the 14 of Luis Gonzalez Nunez, which is good news for Craig Forsyth because being the first and at that time only car one lap down, he gets one of his two laps back. So uh, with now less than 100 laps to go, when we go back green, the 27 possibly still has a shot here of getting back on the lead lap and making forward progress once again. And shout out to Joe McAdore leading the field. Obviously kind of, really, this pit strategy kind of helped him on that one, but... Really did. Hey, I mean, maybe he could show his stuff here. <laughs> yeah, McAdory was on pit road when McAdory... that came out, was able to take service since he had already crossed the commitment line and and was able to pick up the pace car as the race leader. I believe Joseph Morales would have lined up in second, but he actually elected to come back down pit road under pacing here. Uh, maybe top off the fuel tank, maybe put on a fresh set of tires. He'll restart back in the sixth position, but uh, both those drivers staying out that extra lap gained them a ton of track position. And McAdory is one of those guys that I kind of hold close to uh, at least how we are, because McAdory is one of those guys who has raced gateway of, prior before but in a stock car and going from the stock car to an indie car as we have learned is not the easiest transition <laughs> now something i'm noticing here and again we didn't really get to see the green flag pit stop cycle play out so it may not have necessarily looked like this but you've got the 312 who came to actually hold on a second now the 312 is going around the pace car um i'm not sure why all these drivers are going around. Huh. On our telemetry, they are on the lead lap. They are right now running first through. Man, Barney's going to be really confused. I He's in the pace car and everyone just drove by him. <laughs> what in the world? I don't know what's going on here. That lone pace car is out by itself. Okay, so. So is uh, Joseph Morales our new leader? <laughs> Um, or, did, or did the pace car have all these drivers a lap down? <laughs> I'm wondering honestly, if that's the case. I don't know. It, currently, it looks like the pace car has picked up Joseph Morales. Well, we'll try and figure this out here. This Morales right, right now being scored last car on the lead lap, 25 seconds or 27 seconds Arnie's back. pulled off. He's pulled off. All right. I guess we've got what we've got. Akadori, according to our scoring, is the one that's going to lead us to green. The 60s on the tail end of the lead lap. Green flag back in the air with 95 to go, and <laughs> we'll, we'll try and unravel this, but... Well, obviously, uh, now this makes it a lot more difficult for those two, because obviously, Joseph Morales and Joe McAdory, they have not been the fastest cars tonight. Now we've got to play catch-up and try to find a hole to get through. Yeah, this is the first time tonight Eric Schaus has had to deal with traffic. He led the first 40 laps or so out in front, had some challenges, but never had anybody that he had to kind of be in the wake of and try and pass himself as now High Song to the inside of Makadori going oh, into he played for, oh, one no! contact. Oh, and the 312 up and over. A blading on its, well, that's not really a roof. It's cockpit, I guess we'll call it. And the caution's out for the third time tonight. I think a little gap whack came into play there, but it certainly looked like when they were heading into turn one, that wasn't going to end well for at least someone. <laughs> Man, I'm hearing all sorts of confusion. Joseph Morales is trying to figure out how he's lapped down. And honestly, I I'd like to know that too. But as I'm seeing Joe or Jeff Heisung enter turn one, it really seems like Joe McAdory probably came down just a little bit too much. I mean, obviously, when he came down, our good old friend Gap Watch just kind of did the rest there and kind of disposed of uh, <laughs> Joe it's tough enough. It's tough enough when one car enters shallow here, let alone two cars. But again, another one bites dust. That means Craig Forsyth moves up another position. Indeed. And then be you're, the lucky you're, dog. you're seeing your advantage slowly go away. Yep, with him on the lead lap now, that means that there are five more positions ahead of him on the upcoming restart that he can gain, and with every position, more points that he can gain 
over both Jeff Hysong and Luis Gonzalez Nunez's wild now Joseph, ride uh, there for that uh, three twelve. So it looks like Joe there, like it looks like there's been a um, a scoring error. So it looks like Joseph Morales is getting waved by the pace car. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened to cause this previous event, but uh... obviously. The caution, a tough break there for Joe McAdory, but maybe a little bit of a blessing for the league admins to be able to get everything situated for all the confusion from the last set of pacing laps is High Song going to inherit the lead. Eric Schaus in second, Nunez third, and Corley in fourth. Joseph Morales looks like he'll be in fifth, getting his lap back. Forsyth gets the lucky dog, so he'll be sixth. Ooh. McAdory, I believe, yes, he did actually drive his car back to pit road and took on the faster pair, so he only lost a lap in doing so. And Eric Peterson, who's also back on the racetrack after he had to take on his faster pair uh, following the tow, he is two laps down in the eighth position. So all eight cars are still running, but three cautions already here, Matt, and a little less than half our field already a faster pair in the hole. Well, if you're Jeff Hysong, I, you should be happy because there is no damage to the right side of your car. However, you should also not be happy because Craig Forsyth is now back on the lead lap. <laughs> so that strategy is now just kind of went out the window. So now you have to kind of go back to the previous strategy. Just try to make sure you're out running Forsyth. After this week, these drivers will have an off week for the Halloween weekend. And then they'll be back at it in two weeks time, uh, starting off November at Twin Ring Motegi, I am going to be spending the next two weeks trying to make sure that I can actually say that legibly. I don't uh, know what it uh, is, but somehow my brain thinks it, but the tongue does not want to work with me. So, uh, really going to be working on that, but I uh, hope you guys will join us for that in two weeks. And then, of course, the following week, it's the big one. These drivers, they'll be having their pole day qualifying for the season-ending Indianapolis race, the Dark Horse 500 double points race where we uh, end up awarding one of the bigger race trophies of the season along with the championship trophy championship decided at the yard of bricks and to be honest if people play their cards right it may be a race win and a championship trophy someone walks away with that is true craig forsyth who right now is the points leader a former winner of the dark horse 500 if i remember correctly i believe that was back in season two season two or three May have been. Should have the lights out this time, I believe, on the iRacing pace car, and indeed we do. So we'll go back green here on lap 52. So just to kind of uh, go back on the fuel window for these drivers, uh, nobody came to pit road under the first caution, at least nobody up at the front. And so we basically know that they can go more than likely around the 40 lap mark on a tank of fuel, which means that these drivers right now would have to make at least two more pit stops somewhere around the lap 90 mark and around the 130 mark. So that if we go green from here on out, Matt, we're looking at the money stop taking place somewhere in the 10 lap to go range. Uh, and you know there is one guy in the field who's obviously going to try and push it without oh, doing yes. that stop. Oh, so, yes. Uh... <laughs> Wonder who that could be. Yeah, so obviously... Kind of getting risky, you know, hey, if that guy's going for it, other guys are probably going to have to try and go for it as well. Well, Jeff Hysong finished runner-up in this event one season ago. He is going to lead us to green here. He's still looking for his first win on the season tonight. It could come at no better time as he's trying to keep himself in the hunt for the championship. He'll get us back underway with 89 laps to go. Pretty sizable gap, about two and a half car lengths back to Eric Schaus. Now it'll be interesting to see. We've seen Jeff Hysong put the challenge on Eric Schaus when Schaus had the lead. Now it'll be interesting to see what happens with the roles reversed. Yeah, obviously Jeff Hysong was having trouble completing the pass on Eric Schaus, but now Schaus is in that same position that Hysong was in and trying to make it work. Realistically, I think Hysong is going to have to run those higher lines, force him to pass you below because Schaus has been so dominant on that top line and really seems like that bottom line hasn't been able to get that momentum going. 
Is that right there? Shao says challenge accepted with the bottom line left open. Could not get the run off of turn oh. two. Now tries to go to the top and may have had to lift a little bit there to avoid running into the back of the 18. Yeah, I'd say I really think you need to kind of lock Shouse to that bottom line. And it really sounds odd here. And it sounds like, hey, you're giving him the preferred line around the racetrack? Yes, I am giving him the preferred line around the racetrack. I want to make sure he doesn't have that chance to do what he's been doing the entire race. At top side, you're able to get back to the throttle a lot sooner. On that inside line, not only the off the throttle time, but you got that kind of push-up sensation. When you're coming off the corners, oh, I think they nearly hooked right there off a of turn four. That was really close. Chaos is obviously making it known that he wants that high lane, but High Song is definitely putting it kind of in that path, preventing him from being able to drive away. Back from race leader Jeff Heisung. You can also see a battle brewing there for the third spot. Gary Corley hunting down Luis Gonzalez Nunez as again another big run by the 72 trying to get to the oh, outside indeed. here, and I think he's got him. Yeah, that's the thing. Once he had that outside line, it's kind of game over. Schaus has been so good on that high line, I don't think he's going to get it back. Yep, nope. I saw him going to push up there almost into Eric Schaus, and Schaus goes back to the point. And that bright green number 72. So Eric Schaus trying to go coast to coast here tonight at Gateway. Moves Jeff Heisong back to second. Luis Gonzalez Nunez has now seemed to be able to break away from Gary Corley for that third spot. And while those top two were battling, he was starting to close back in. We saw these three kind of throw a blanket over them just prior to the green flag pit stops. Uh, we might be seeing that again here in the next few laps because the 14 is closing fast. Yeah, now it's all up to Luis Gonzalez Nunez. He's been really good on these longer runs, so I'd be kind of interested to see how quickly he can get around Jeff Heisong and if he can if he can run down Eric Schaus. On board with the 14 of Luis Gonzalez Nunez looking ahead at the top two. Joe Macadori has returned back to the track after his, uh, well, I don't know if you can call it a flip or if you call it a barrel roll. I mean, that Excursion. thing was all sorts. It was all sorts of different directions up in one and two. Uh, he is one lap down in the seventh spot. Eric Peterson, he is two laps down. So those two drivers looking for a couple of cautions to get themselves back on the lead lap. We've worked three cautions so far here tonight. Last season, we ended up having only two cautions fly. Most cautions that have flown during a gateway race, I was back in season three. It flew 11 times. Ooh. Field was about three times the size, though, as well. So I don't think we'll eclipse that here tonight. But obviously, just kind of having that big difference, and even with the smaller field, still having the up high caution counts, just kind of surprising. It just shows you how much the drivers are really struggling with this track tonight. We mentioned about with the two previous cautions, Craig Forsyth back on the lead lap. He is in the fifth position. Right now, his lap times, they're consistent, but they're nothing like the drivers up inside of the top three. So... That begs the question, is the 27 in ride mode already thinking about the possibility of this thing going green to the end? And, you know, you, you mentioned there's a driver in the field that would probably try and stretch it here to make it on one stop rather than two. Well, guess who that would be? The guy front and center on your screen. Is that what he's thinking right now? And the fact that we're not really seeing him get up there any further inside the top four. Realistically, I think yes, but probably not by choice. I mean, Craig Forsyth did qualify six out of the eight cars running. He did not look fast in qualifying, didn't really look fast in practice, didn't really seem to be setting the world on fire there. So I think he may have just been trying to, instead of being able to be faster with some of the guys up front, how about I try to out-strategy the guys in front? So if he can try to save time or gas just here and there, hopefully he can make it those few extra laps, just doesn't have to come in. You know, you talk about the, the not as impressive qualifying effort, not really showing a whole lot of speed. I feel this is like what we were talking about him in the beginning, middle portions of last week's race. So I'm not I'm not taking anything for granted when it comes to that 27 right now. And rightfully so. I mean, it's kind of pulled the rabbit out of the hat multiple times this season. Would not be surprised to see something else. Well, Eric Schaus... I'm pretty certain, I'll look back and confirm this, but I'm pretty certain he's never had a multi-win season here in the Dark Horse Racing Series. Uh, when he picked up the victory a couple weeks ago at Homestead, that was his first win in multiple seasons, stretching all the way back to a, a Pocono race, which I believe was season three. 
and uh, that was his only win of that season. So right now, he's obviously been the strongest car of the night, has led the most laps. If he closes out the deal, be the first time that he's gone to victory lane more than once in a dark horse racing season. So that'd be a nice little notch to put into his uh, career statistics. Realistically, what you're kind of doing here this late in the season, obviously for Eric Schaus, you're kind of out of that championship picture. Even if you do win every race up till the final race of the season, I, I, you're not clawing back that deficit. But what you're doing right now is just giving yourself momentum for the rest of the season because right now you're just trophy hunting. That's all you can do. And you're just setting yourself up for next season and saying, hey, this is how I won this race last year. Let me figure out how I'm going to do this again next season when I'm in a better championship spot. And, you know, not to say that Eric Schaus wouldn't want to be in a position to battle for the championship, but, I mean, does that make it a little bit easier, make your job a little bit easier because it's one less thing you have to think about. You don't have to be aware of the drivers around you as far as point standards are concerned. You don't have to do mental calculations of points per position in your head. You could just go out there. You know you got the fastest car. Just hit your marks, get your pit strategy correct, and reap the rewards at the end of the night. And, and realistically, yes. I mean, it lets you go out and have fun where – and you don't have to worry about, hey, do I have enough? Do, do it like who? Who's my championship competitor? Am I going to finish ahead of him? What is he doing? What do I need to do? It, it's basically, hey, what is this guy behind me doing? Can he beat me? I don't know. But at least I'm faster than him. And just continuing to go off of that, wherever been, hey, you have to have that mental pressure of, I need to make sure I finish this, or you know, hey, I want to go for the win, but I can't because of this. Got a battle here for second place. Nunez has reeled in Jeff Hysong. This is a little ground to him. Whoa! Oh my gosh, that thing got all sorts of loose off of turn two to the 14. That might be why he was losing ground through one and two, but Song and Nunez, this right here, a battle between two potential drivers that would like to put their name in the hat for the championship mathematically when we get to Indianapolis. And I'm almost wondering if this is a case right here of Jeff Song maybe used up a little too much of those Firestones when he was battling with Eric Schaus for the race lead and Nunez was able to preserve those tires a little bit better for the long run. And see, this is this kind of what's, what has me a little bit out. If you look at Luis Gonzalez Nunez, it's not a doubt that he is a fast driver. He is very quick. He is very skilled. It's not a question of that. The question more or less pops into my mind is... Can he A, save his equipment, and B, is he one of those drivers who can plan out a race? Where, uh, By planning out a race, I mean, can he plan for the long run to say, hey, this is going to be an 80-lap run. I need to be doing this. I need to make sure my tires are at this. And the big thing is, I don't think that Luis has that just yet, where he is a fast driver. He is a skilled driver. We've seen it multiple times this season and previous seasons. But when it comes to, hey, he's trying to get past Jeff Hysong, hey, almost wrecking the car, that's not really a, that's not, a, yes, you're trying to push and get by him, but that's not a, something that you want to happen or have happened almost every occurrence that you try to pass a car. Same thing for pit road mistakes. I mean, those are just mistakes that you cannot have. I mean, how many times have Craig Forsyth had pit road mistakes this year? That, that's kind of the thing you got to keep in mind where it's not a put down, but it's just one of those things where if you put it all together, Two seconds here, two seconds there. That can easily cost you a position here and there. And we even said it for Rick Ravon earlier this season where he would have been in so many better positions in each race if he didn't push this hard or if he kind of prioritized different things. And it's hard to do that. But I, I don't know if you have anything else to add on to that. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I think the big thing for Luis Gonzalez Nunez especially, too, has been the inconsistency. He's had some really good runs. In the nine races previously that he's run in, he's finished in the podium four times, two of them victories, of course, but he's also got four finishes outside of the top ten. That's not counting the fact that he missed the season opener. So, you know, the wins are great, the podium finishes are great, but you get killed in the points when you finish outside of the top ten, let alone the top five, when you're other competitors for the championship are consistently finishing up inside the top five in podium positions week after week. He's got the speed to be able to find victory lane every week. We know that, but he's got to put together complete races as well in the races he does not win, and that's where he's going to be able to then be a championship contender. I think I think that's really what's taken him out of the running for this championship up to this point. Yeah, and if you realistically look at it, I mean, look at Jeff Hysong versus Luis Gonzalez Nunez. I mean, Luis Gonzalez-Nunez, he has an average start of 6.33, which beats 
Jeff Isong's start of eight, basically eighth place. But the main thing is, Isong has a better average finish with more races ran, and he's more consistent. Now, granted, Luis Gonzalez Nunes has those two wins, but he's still behind <laughs> Jeff Isong in points, and that's just the inconsistency. Yep. We talk about it all the time here with this type of points format. Wins are great. They get you max points, but consistency is key because you can win as many races as you want, but if you haven't accumulated the most points overall by the end of the season, it doesn't matter. It's not going to win you the big one, the championship trophy. Let me bring up the last five races again. Jeff Heisong has not finished outside of the top four in the last right. five races. Third in the past three races, and past that, it's been two fourth-place finishes. If you look at the last five races for Luis gonzalez Nunez, it's kind of a roller coaster. 11th at Michigan after that wreck. Then he wins Milwaukee. Then he, again, wrecks at Kansas. He finishes well at Homestead, and then he wrecks again at Iowa. It's kind of the up, down, up, down where, hey, imagine that every one of those 14 place finishes could have been easily a top five. You'd, you'd be fighting right next to Craig, or Craig Forsythe right now. Yeah, and if you're wondering why Craig Forsythe's the points leader, yeah, he's gone to victory lane four times. But in the 10 previous starts, outside of the season opener at Pocono, he's finished in the top five in every single race. And in eight of those nine previous races, he's finished in the podium. So, you know. We've said this about drivers in the past that have gone on to win the championship. Rick Ravon had numbers like this last season. Uh, Robert Molesko III had numbers like this back in season three. We have seen this time after time. We've seen drivers that are fast and have found victory lane, but they have followed it up with consistent finishes in the races that they have not parked their car in winner's circle. Nick DeGroot, obviously another one of those drivers that has managed to do that very same thing and gone on to win a championship. Hi, son. Just made a dash off the pit road looks like he's trying to take advantage of maybe a little bit of an undercut here at the moment eric shouse currently on pit road i'm trying to think did he speed no he did not speed turns the lead over to luis gonzalez nunez and now it's going to be interesting here too because uh, back when we had the caution come out just after the pit stops had taken place our first cycle of green flag pit stops the 312 of joe macadori who came down on the third lap of Green Flag Pit Stops was the leader, Jeff Heisong, who came down the second lap of Pit Stops was second, and Eric Schaus, who had come down the first lap on that cycle, was third. So I was wondering if there was something in it of coming down Pit Road, the latest gained you track position once everything cycled around. Granted, we didn't get to see a Green Flag lap after that to know if that was the case. Now we'll get a test case here with the 14. And see, that's a big thing where I've always used to the undercut actually being really the preferred strategy. Just being able to undercut a guy by one or two laps can give you a huge advantage. But here, it really kind of seems like it's either evened out or reversed. Take a look at the 27. Craig Forsyth still out there. Is he trying to stretch it to do only one stop? Well, and that was going to be road, so more than likely not. I don't think I don't think you can save uh, fifty some odd laps. I don't think you can even save fifty five laps on a tank of fuel. Ooh, it almost got a little bit loose on pit road exit, but or pit road entrance. But you got to think that's really what has made Craig Forsyth so dangerous this season is just his ability to strategize even when he's not fast. So, do you think maybe this was his opportunity of if he's not able to get to the front at any other point here tonight? get himself the lap led bonus point now mm, honestly yes i mean those bonus points even one or two points but like we mentioned earlier just those one or two points helps joseph morales going to lead here this will be his first lap led of the night he of course did stay out the extra lap uh when we had the green flag cycle before but joe mcadory was the leader at the time as he had also stayed out and both the 312 and the 60 came to pit lane at the same time. So Morales looks like he's going to stay out another lap here. So he'll be pacing the field for the moment. Eric Schaus is in second after the cycle. And oh, well, maybe not. Luis Gonzalez Nunez is going to get around the 72. So when things cycle around, it will be Nunez to the race lead. I'm trying to figure out how he had this big of a jump. Yeah, it almost looked like Schaus let him go. I don't know if Schaus had a moment over there. Oh, Schaus is slow. Song's now gotten around the 72. So what is going on right now with our pole sitter? I'm looking throughout the car. I don't see him hit the wall any bit. Just looking here. Actually, no, he touched the wall out of two. He touched the wall pretty aggressively out of turn two. 
has a little bit of right side damage with the side pod. I, that's a. Uh... Let's see if we can go back and find that. Oh, yeah. Drifts up the track in turn two. Ooh, that is pretty good contact. Actually, it looked like, was that the 312 of Joe McAdory right behind him that I think also got the wall? That same lap, same corner. It looks like Eric currently still falling through the field. Craig Forsyth just ended up driving up to P4. And this is not surprising, too. What It may look like when we showed you back on that replay, it may have looked like light contact. You can visibly see the damage, and we saw a number of drivers even last week when they got up into that outside wall, just how off the pace they were. Uh, Craig Forsyth, Charles Teed, we saw just how they, it, it was all of a sudden like a parachute was coming out the back of their car and just hindering their speed. That's obviously the case here for the 72. Well, big thing is all these little kind of wings coming off the car, they're not all meant for decoration. A lot of these are really aero devices that, hey, when air impacts the side of them, it helps it drive through the corner, helps it cut through the air. When any of these are obviously crumpled, it kind of restricts that ability. It makes it a lot harder to drive. It just really throws off the characteristic. Plus, you got to think, hey, you've been doing 90 laps of this car driving this certain way. You touch the wall, and now the car drives entirely different. You're trying to really relearn the car from scratch. Eric Schaus now back to the fourth position, just dropped to fifth with Gary Corley getting around him. Now he does have his faster pair available, but it's a catch-22 right now for the 72 car because he just came to pit road about six laps ago. Well, ten laps actually for Eric Schaus. He doesn't want to come to pit lane again because he's certainly going to lose at least one lap, maybe two, to take on that faster pair. Right now he's in ride mode just hoping a caution comes out with him still on the lead lap. Hmm. That's it. I, I think we saw this last week with Charles Teed and him not taking the faster pair earlier on in the run kind of right. shot him in the foot later for the end of the race. I think really if you're Eric Schaus, you had to come in. You have to come in, just repair it now because you had the speed to claw your way back up. Just kind of bank on that caution if there is going to be a caution, but you're losing more time just staying out here. It takes these drivers less than 25 seconds to make a lap around here at Gateway. And just looking at the telemetry, Eric Schaus is running nearly two seconds a lap slower than race leader Luis Gonzalez Nunez. So it is not going to take very long for the 14 to see the 72 up ahead and be able to put him a lap down. He's already put Joseph Morales a lap down. Uh, that staying out strategy did not work for the 60. Joe McAdory up ahead is already minus one. If the 14 get around him, he would then be two laps down. So Morales right now in the free pass position should we get a caution. And continuing uh, to close in on Eric Schaus is Luis Gonzalez Nunez trying to make it uh, three I for just, four here at the smaller low banked racetracks. I just don't understand a strategy here because you're losing about two to three seconds every lap on the leader. I just don't understand staying out. I'd rather just come in, repair the car, and be one lap down where, hey, if you get a lap by the leader now, and you come in, hey, you're going to be about two laps down. You're going to be really behind Eric Peterson. I mean, it, all right, so thinking about this in terms of the long run, you're more than likely, if you get put a lap down and a caution doesn't come out, you're taken out of the running for this win. But, at the same time, let's say that 14 of Nunez gets up there, laps the 72 of Schaus, isn't able to catch Gary Corley by the time we end up having another cycle of pit stops. Then Schaus can come down pit lane, take on the faster pair, return to the track, maybe be the first car one lap down, maybe get himself a timely caution. I just don't know if, if that takes place. We've already projected that the uh, next time these drivers would be on pit lane would be somewhere in the vicinity of 10 to 15 to go. I don't think that's enough time to be able to work your way back up through the field to the front. Yeah, I think that's just kind of wishful thinking right there where I'd rather just try to fight my way back and repair the car now and hope for the best rather than kind of rely on that because right now you're getting laughed. So uh, I don't know. Eric Schaus now is going to fall a lap down to Luis Gonzalez Nunez. And Nunez, who spent a good portion of that last run, well, the last two runs, in the third position, all of a sudden, after things cycle out, he is out in front, showing the way. 
looking for his third win on the season, which would tie him for second most with Rick Ravon. Isong still holding that second spot, and look who is up to third. Perseverance pays off once again for the points leader. Craig Forsyth is up in a podium position right now with 40 laps to go. And again, we mentioned this is what makes him so dangerous, where he can just kind of claw his way back up the field and be in contention for these races, even when he's not good at this track. He is running about six seconds behind. Oh, we got a car pitting. That's Gary Corley in the seven. I believe this is unscheduled for Gary Corley. Either that or maybe with the fuel window possibly open to make it the rest of the way. Might be making his final pit stop of the evening. We'll follow up on that in just a moment. But uh, Craig Forsyth trying to reel in Jeff Hysong. And consistently the last two, three, four laps... He's been anywhere from a tenth to two tenths quicker than Jeff Hysong, so he is rapidly closing up that potential battle for second. And that's the scary part for Jeff Hysong. Now you got to kind of focus away from trying to chase down Luis Gonzalez Indias and just two, making sure that Craig Forsyth stays behind you. Looks like it was an unscheduled stop for Gary Corley in the seven. Must have gotten up into the wall at some point and uh, came down to take on his faster pair. That has lost him two laps and dropped him down now to the eighth position as Jeff Hysong. Man, that looked like that back end did not want to stay planned off turn two as he slid past the lap machine of Joe McAdory. And I see Je Eric Schaus has fallen behind Joseph Morales, so he will be one lap down even if the caution does come out. He would not be in the lucky dog position. We've only got three cars on the lead lap right now, and they're really the three we've highlighted as far as the uh, potential championship hopefuls in a few weeks' time. Nunez the leader, Song in second, and Forsyth in that third position. I don't know. <laughs> so these drivers were last on pit road between... 50 to 55 laps to go. Actually, it was 55 to 57 laps to go. So they'll have to come back down pit road somewhere in the vicinity of the next 18 laps or so. So, ooh, it's the money stop here, Matt. And we've seen a couple of drivers already make it really close to almost spinning out on entry. We've already seen a driver spin out on exit. Pit Road still has a part to play, so we, we can't basically look at this top three right now and say, all right, they're, they're all set because there's still the opportunity open for any of these drivers to make a mistake and somebody else to put their name up to the, to the front. We, we, we've already seen the lead change hands in some very interesting ways here tonight. We ended up seeing McAdory get the lead with a, a caution coming out right after the green flag pit stop cycle was done. We saw Hysong get the race lead after he and McAdory made contact on that upcoming restart. Uh, Eric Schaus has obviously been out in front here tonight, and now Nunez getting the race lead. So uh, the lead has been swapped around, but not necessarily with passes on the racetrack. Yeah, and that's the thing where I think on this pit stop, you really need to take it a lot more conservative. That you don't really need to push it as much, because if you're Jeff Hysong, yes... Craig Forsyth is a real threat in your mirror. You need to be kind of worried about that. But I'd rather take it easy on this pit stop. I know Craig Forsyth will be pushing it, trying to catch up to me. And the potential of him making a mistake versus me making a mistake, I just wouldn't want to take that risk. We followed the 72 of Eric Schaus down pit road to show you the miracles of the fast repair, but also to show you just how much damage that 72 sustained. Like That whole right side pod was completely caved in. He saw it pop out there. He returns back to the racetrack as the race leader is on pit road. Luis Gonzalez Nunez for his final stop of the night. Man, I just, I'm sitting here and I really wish that Eric Schaus would have came in earlier because he is now three laps down. High Song's going to be the leader. Let's see if he might be coming to pit road this time round. Nope, he's going to stay out. Oh, no, he's not. Never mind. Late draw there to the apron of turn three. Those are, the high song's pushing it. Type. He's pushing it on the pit road. I mean, any bit. Honestly, I think what really would have aided him is trying to undercut Eric Schaus just a little bit. But 
realistically, he stayed out a lap extra on his previous stop. I don't know if he would have made it if he tried to stop earlier. Now Craig Forsyth, we know he's stayed out a couple laps later than everybody else on the last cycle of pit stops, so uh, he wouldn't actually even have to come to pit road until 14 laps from now. We'll see if he's going to jump to pit lane because the 14 and the 18 come to pit road, or if he's going to run this thing out as far as he possibly can. I mean, you wouldn't have to necessarily take on a full tank of fuel. Maybe that's the strategy call here for him feeling, if I'm not going to have to take on that much fuel, probably can get the tires changed in the amount of time it would take to put in the fuel I'd need to get to the finish. Why not run this tank out? Honestly, I, I see it. Honestly, hope for a caution, hope for something to go wrong where it kind of bails you out. I, I, I like it. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got the entire field one lap down right now. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that even if he then came to pit road and we got a lucky dog driver, that lucky dog driver would actually have to start at the very tail end of the field. So that's a bunch of traffic that you've got yeah. between you and that one driver on the lead lap. That's correct. So like I said, you're just throwing a wrench into it. So I like it. Why not? Got that's a pretty sizable points gap coming into tonight. You started this race upside down off of turn <laughs> two. You were two laps down, got back on the lead lap. So why not throw the Hail Mary? You've got some room to work with. Makes sense. And like I said, if something goes wrong and you're really the only car on the lead lap, this works out swimmingly for you. Nunez and High Song, those two separated by almost four seconds. That would right now, what was a battle for the lead between those two is now the battle for the lucky dog. Should we get a caution in these final 25 laps? And We'll just wait and see how long this 27 is going to stay out there before he eventually hits pit road. He can, by calculations, go another 10 laps if he so chooses before eventually having to come to pit road. That'd be around the 15 laps to go mark. Just to remind everybody again, uh, the Dark Horse Racing Series will be off next week for Halloween weekend. We will be back the following Sunday when these drivers head to the penultimate race of the season, Twin Ring Motegi preparing for the season finale the following week at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You doing anything special for Halloween, Matt? Uh, I think I'm passing out Halloween candy this year, unfortunately. Ah. Yeah, I can't go get free candy anymore. Looks weird. Yeah. We tried, we tried <laughs> passing out Halloween candy like three years ago, and only one kid showed up. So I don't know if our house just isn't popular or what, but uh, we had a lot of candy left over afterwards, which didn't really disappoint me. I, I think we have enough lights this year. I, I don't think they can make us miss us. I'll, I'll come trick or treating at your house. Uh, I don't know if your car will make it. Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably Segway not. Segway into our next sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig Forsyth just seems like I don't. He must have a horseshoe. He has to have a lucky horseshoe in that car because <laughs> even the races where he doesn't seem to be a contender, he always shows up near the end. Now, here's the interesting thing, though. Looking at the lap times currently, he is losing about a half second to the fresh tires of Luis Gonzalez Nunez and Jeff Highsong. When he comes to pit lane, it's very unlikely he's going to maintain the race lead. So the only way that he really could is the scenario you were talking about of maybe a caution coming out, having the drivers that are a lap down stay trapped a lap down, only one be able to get the lucky dog. At this point in time, if it doesn't work out, he'll probably end up still finishing in the third position on the podium. I mean, I how I see it here is... If a caution does come out, hey, that's a win for Greg Forsyth, where, hey, his plan worked out perfectly. If a caution doesn't come out, I really see the lowest he's going to fall is probably third. So either way, it, it's it's going to be a podium for him, and that's good points. Not certain. Eric Schaus might have had another issue that we did not see. Oh, it looks like Craig Forsyth going to be coming in this time. He tried. Just couldn't do it. I'm going to pit road about five laps earlier than projected. But let's watch his entry on to pit rope. You see right there, just before you get to that line, you can see the rear tires kind of chatter with the bumps there. That's got to give a driver a kind of a sensation of this thing's going to spin around on me. Yeah, the thing of is these cars love it's almost like an F1 car. It loves the completely smooth surfaces. So when we go to these tracks and these street circuits, 
Um, I know we haven't went to the street circuit this season or really in, uh, I really, we, we stopped going to street circuits since we stopped going to road courses. But if you think last year to Long Beach, uh, with Long Beach being so bumpy, I mean, down the entire back straight, a lot of these drivers were just complaining so much if the car is so unsettled and the bumps really knock you all around. Uh, it's kind of a miracle we don't go to Detroit Bell Isle. I mean, it is awful with the amount of bumps that are there. And with the nighttime conditions here under the lights at Gateway, several times tonight you've been able to see just how low these cars are to the ground and how rough the track surface is. See a lot of sparks coming out from underneath the undercarriages of these machines. And Craig Forsythe did come back out about 11 seconds off of the leader. But again, that's good news for Jeff Highsong. Jeff Highsong, again, it's not that win that you wanted, but hey, I mean, two top fours, three top threes. And the second place, I mean, eventually it's going to end up happening. Yeah, and obviously, you know, we'd like to be able to foresee the future and be able to, at this point in time, tell you, you know, where does Jeff Hysong have to finish in relation to Craig Forsythe this week and in two weeks' time at Motegi to be mathematically eligible for the championship at Indianapolis. The problem is we don't know how many drivers are going to show up for Indy. I mean, we can't do the calculations just based on the numbers we've got right now because... We don't know how many positions are available to gain or lose and in translation double points to gain or lose so you're gonna want to tune into that indianapolis race and find out how big a field it is and what kind of a championship battle we're going to have but right now luis gonzalez nunez he's gonna see 15 to go here at the line he's looking for his third win on the season it's incredible you go back to new hampshire earlier on this year and we were in disbelief that we were saying it was his first career win in the Dark Horse Racing Series. Here we are about two months later, and he's about to get win number three. And realistically, he has been on a tear this season. But it just, again, then that inconsistency that's kind of ruled him out of really a championship slot. Nunez I guess, I guess to... it's been a little bit of a... It's kind of ruled him out of a championship slot, but it's also kind of... Ben Craig Forsythe and how competitive even his bad nights he ends up pulling a P3 so <laughs> yeah, so it's always good when you end up winning the race it's bad when the guy you're trying to run down for the championship finishes second or third behind you and actually in, in the previous two races that Luis Gonzalez Nunez has won the runner up finisher has been that 27 car <laughs> Nunez started this race from the fourth position he didn't get out in front and lead until we ended up having that cycle of green flag pit stops prior to the last one. And since then, it has been smooth sailing for driver number 14. He probably was the driver that ran the highest on the racetrack right up against that wall going into turn one. Now we're seeing him hook the bottom I and mean, he put his left sides almost down to that rumble strip that time through one and two. And I, I think it's partially just confidence. I mean, just being able to, hey, you ran 130 laps. This is how the car has been acting. The biggest thing that can throw him off right now is a caution where uh, you can be assured it's going to be all hands on deck for the last few laps. But I see that very unlikely. Do you think part of it, too, is noticing what happened to Eric Schaus and saying, I'm going to go into the corner as far away from that outside wall as I possibly can? And here's a big thing where... Obviously, a lot of people say just don't start doing anything differently. Don't throw off your rhythm. This is one of those cases where I really say, hey, it's okay to back it down a little bit. It's okay to take it a little more conservative because I can tell you that Jeff Heisong probably doing the same thing where he's kind of in that conservative mode of just trying to make sure he's saving the car. And I don't think he's really going to gain that much time on you. And again, if he really does, you can just ramp it back up. So uh, I'd say, hey, just no reason to push the car. Just kind of coast to a good finish. I was going to bring you up to date on uh, Eric Schaus. Uh, he must have gotten into the wall again at some point. Came down pit road about uh, 10 laps ago, and he is sitting in his pit stall. He is right now 19 laps down. Looks like he will be finishing last on the field. So that is a tough break for a guy that started on the pole position. Not certain if he led the most laps. I think he did, but we'll obviously have to wait for the uh, final finishing results to know that statistic. And really looked like the car to beat here tonight just ran into an issue and it all seemed to just kind of snowball from there I mean, that's a big thing that we talk about position and uh that, that's that's a tough break 
that's two weeks in a row where he has really been one of the most competitive, almost race winning cars yes. in the field. And again, something like this has just kind of knocked him out. And it's Less part time. of it. That's what we really talk about with. I don't know if so-and-so is championship ready. I don't really know if so-and-so is prepared to go long into this championship. That's what we really mean that we don't know if, like I said, Eric Schaus is a fast guy. He's proven the past two weeks, but again, these two mistakes, those add up where in a championship where you can't really have mistakes. Keeping our eyes here on Eric Schaus with everything that's happened so far here tonight. Still can't take anything for granted at Gateway as he's got five and a half circuits left to run here at Gateway. There are no battles really going on throughout the field. Uh, the closest battle for position right now would be between Eric Peterson and Joe McAdory, who are two laps down a piece, and they're separated by three seconds. So pretty much now everybody just slotted in the spots they're in and trying to get to that checkered flag with High Song in second, for, uh, Forsyth in third, Gary Corley right now, the first car one lap down in fourth, and Morales looking for another top five rung. Is he's a lap down in that fifth position. Going to be four to go this time. For Luis Gonzalez Nunez. Saw the caution wave three times here tonight. Saw two flips, I believe it is, here at, at Gateway. We normally uh, don't attribute tracks like this to flips, but when you consider the high speeds that these cars carry, not that much of a surprise. And we're going to have seven of our eight drivers finish tonight's race under power. Shouse, unfortunately, going to be the only one that will not. Is Eric Shouse right now? I think I think he's just trying to get these laps done. I mean, when you're out in front this with is... a commanding lead like this and it, you're at 10 to go, these got to be the longest laps ever, right? This is the longest part of the race where you're just counting down and saying, please, please just throw. You I mean, this is the point in the race where if you're P1, you just can't wait to see the white flag. You just can't wait to see the checkered flag. You're saying like, maybe the, maybe I racing will have an error. Maybe we'll throw it a little bit early. So I don't have to do all these laps. And if you're Jeff Highsong, if you're catching the leader, you're saying, man, maybe, maybe just, we need a caution. We need someone to extend this a few less, but I, I can tell you probably the top three is just saying, Hey man, let's, let's just get to the end. Oh, and one driver that needed a caution was Gary Corley. He had to come to pit road for fuel. So there goes his top five run. He drops back to seventh as the white flag is in the air for Luis Gonzalez Nunez. He took the checkered flag for the first time in his career back at New Hampshire. He followed it up at the Milwaukee Mile a couple weeks later. It's been a bit of a tough streak here the last couple of weeks for driver 14. But win number three is going to come here tonight at Gateway. Luis Gonzalez Nunez wins in St. Louis. And really just kind of a dominating win and being able to capitalize. And even when he did make that mistake, he really got extremely lucky just trying to unbury himself. Luis Gonzalez Nunez came into this race fourth in the point standings, triple digits behind the points leader. Only time will tell if this win could potentially still keep him mathematically in the hunt for the championship because Craig Forsythe, the driver he's trying to run down, does come across the line in the third position. Jeff Hysong, another podium finish as he's going to finish in the second spot. The consistency continues for driver 18. And Luis Gonzalez Nunez is going to burn it down here on the front straightaway at Worldwide Technology Raceway right under the flag stand. He, it seemed to be that the shorter, low-banked racetracks have been his forte. He's three for four and taking checkered flags at tracks of that configuration this season. And if just looking at how much of a battle of attrition this was, I mean, Eric Schaus, he is one of, he's been one of the fastest cars in this race, ended up finishing P8. Craig Forsyth, again, flipped over on lap one, turn two, and manages to drive it back to a P3. That is just insane. Absolutely, yes. We're going to take a look here at the finishing results. From this evening's event. Tremendous run by Luis Gonzalez Nunez to pick up the victory. Only three cars finishing on the lead lap with High Song and Forsyth. Morales going to get another top five run. He was the only driver to finish one lap down. Gets a fourth position as a result. And talked about the fact that Gary Corley 
It was about looked like two laps shy of making it to the finish on fuel. That moved Eric Peterson up into the fifth position. Joe McAdory up to sixth, and Corley dropped from fifth to seventh. Well, actually, from fourth to seventh in the final few laps of this race. Eric Schaus was the only driver who did not reach the conclusion as he brought it home in the eighth position. Fifth straight season that we've had a different driver go to victory lane here at Gateway in the Dark Horse Racing Series. Luis Gonzalez Nunez, the most recent here tonight. We're going to talk with him in just a few moments, but we're also going to talk with the rest of our podium finishers. And let's see if we can kick things off by talking with the driver that came into tonight's race as the points leader. Didn't get off to the best start, but still brings it home for a solid podium finish in third. Let's see if we can talk with Craig Forsyth. Hey, Craig, it's Matt and Seth up here in the FRM booth. You got us? You bet you guys. How you doing? I'll tell you what, I don't know what kind of luck you've got, but I want some of it because we ended up seeing last week, you got into the wall, we're running around the 5th to 7th position, next thing we know, you're up there winning that race here tonight, you're up on your lid off of turn 2 at the completion of lap 3, next thing we know, we see you get a couple of lucky dogs, get back on the lead lap, and you're crossing the line up in the podium position, it just seems like there's a never give up attitude with this 27 car. Uh, I, I never do give up, but yeah, I, for not being Irish, I sure have a lot of their luck because, uh, yeah, I certainly being upside down and in, in last two laps down on the first lap was uh, not going to be a good, the start to a good night, I didn't think. Now, we ended up seeing once you got back in the lead lap, we were kind of trying to figure out what strategy you would play from that point on. Obviously, not having the mulligan with the faster pair if you would take things a little bit more conservatively. And then we started looking at the fact that this could possibly turn into a fuel race. We saw you, saw you stay out a little bit longer there on that last cycle of green flag pit stops. What was the strategy at that point in time for that kind of a call? I, I just knew th those guys were going to go like sh a short fill or a... a, a, a early pit was the the better option to give you the fast tires, especially with those two so close to each other. So based on that, I knew that I was just going to go long and try and lead laps and hope like heck for a caution. Cause that was going to, you know, the caution would have trapped the whole field a lap down, let me get tires and fuel and put me right back at the front of the field, front of all of them on fr the freshest tires. So that was basically it. It was like, as it, you know, as soon as I, I knew that they were going to, you know, everyone was going to have to make a, a pit and then they did the short the 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 early pit it was like well I, i'm i'm committed to staying out i'm already you know six seconds back not going to catch them short of a caution so that you know that was basically it you know, obviously we've had to see you kind of mount comebacks in the last two weeks got a week off before we go to motegi in two weeks time does the strategy change up of maybe trying to qualify a little bit closer to the front of the field, maybe be a little bit more aggressive to not be in a trouble spot early on? Or uh, do you have a strategy for Motegi? Is it a play it by ear, play it by situation that week? Uh, well, I, I promised my intention was not to, uh, to uh, qualify seven tenths off the pace. That was uh, not by design. That's for sure. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm normally not a very good qualifier. So I, I make it up during the race. I think Montegi will probably be the same. I'll just, I mean, it's it's about staying safe, you know, making making good choices to make sure I'm I'm there at the end to protect the points lead, and uh, get it, you know, go it, have as much of a points lead as I can heading into uh, into Indy in uh, well three weeks. Well, Craig, a tremendous run once again here tonight for you. Going to continue to keep that points lead. Uh... Uh, looks like it'll it'll shrink a little bit, but not that much. And have a pretty sizable gap still heading into Motegi in a couple of weeks' time. Congratulations on the tremendous comeback run here tonight. Before we let you go, we'll give you the opportunity to, for, for some thank you sponsors and shout outs. Uh, I got to thank uh, Jim over at 40 Racewear and, uh, you know, the whole all the guys at uh, Dark Horse. You know, we, Sorry, the, the fields have been uh, shrinking, but, uh, you know, it's coming towards the end of the season. So we'll, we'll rebuild over Christmas, that's for sure. And uh, you guys over at FRN. Thanks for uh, the broadcast and uh, look forward to seeing you again. That is Craig Forsyth, your third place finisher here tonight at Gateway. Congratulations once again on a good run. Uh, have a happy Halloween and we'll see you in two weeks. You betcha. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Let's see if we can dial up tonight's runner up finisher, Jeff Hysong. Jeff, Matt, and Seth up here in the FRM booth. You got a copy? Hey, how you guys doing? 
Doing good. Well, man, I'll tell you what. It's amazing when we look at your stats from the last, not even just the last couple of weeks, but we go back like the last two months. You had back-to-back fourth place finishes, then three thirds in a row, and now back-to-back runner-up finishes. I mean, the consistency for this 18 car, it is up there front and center for all to see. A strong performance here tonight. We knew you had good numbers coming in, a runner-up finish last season as well. What little more do you need to have this 18 in victory lane? Um, just pace. I didn't, I don't think I had what Luis had. He had it going pretty good. I lost uh, focus there at the end. I needed something to drink on that last run. So uh, he kind of ran away with it. Now we didn't see a whole lot of drivers really test the waters with driving it deep on the inside line, especially in one and two. When you were in those battles in the early going with the 72, you were one of the few drivers that tested it down there. Weren't able to complete the pass, but what things did you learn of maybe things to kind of keep in the back of your mind for late in the race if it came down to trying to make a last lap pass um you could kind of stay closer going down there and get in the clean air as long as you didn't hook it coming off a two so that was kind of the downside you had to be careful with getting back on the power off a two but um yeah it just it just seemed like you could stay closer with the clean air but um the three and four was definitely where you had to make your moves one and two was no good Obviously, trying each week to finish ahead of the 27, chip away at that points lead, be in the hunt when you get to Indianapolis. We've got a week off, but then we go to Motegi. So with this momentum, what's the goal when we get there? So, I mean, with the consistency you said, if I could take it and go a little bit further and go first and first in the next two races and see where we're at, that'd be that'd be the goal. That's looking like where it would trend for certain to be a lot of fun to be able to see that kind of a comeback there and make it even closer for that championship battle. Uh, obviously got a, a couple of weeks to think about it and strategize, Jeff. So uh, good luck on that. Congrats on the great run tonight. Before we let you go, though, we'll give you the opportunity to thank some sponsors and do some shout outs. Um, big shout out to you guys. Thanks for your coverage. Shout out to the family. I um, love you guys. And then hats off to Craig for uh, driving back up onto the podium from two lats down. And then uh, Luis for just driving away right there. It was a hell of a drive. That is Jeff Hysong. He brings it home P2 here tonight for the second straight season at Gateway. Congrats on the great run. Enjoy your Halloween and uh, we'll see you at Motegi in two weeks time. Thanks, guys. See you in two weeks. And let's go down to victory lane with his third career win. Luis Gonzalez Nunez now moves to sixth on the all times wins list for the Dark Horse Racing Series. Let's talk with him now. Hey, Luis, it's Matt and Seth up here in the FRM booth. You got us? I got you, guys. Well, man, I'll tell you what. Another shorter, low-banked racetrack. We've seen you do it in the past at... Milwaukee Mile, and then before that at New Hampshire, we knew you were going to be one of the ones to watch here this evening, but you didn't really make your appearance at the front until late in this race. So what was the strategy in the early going that eventually got you to that point? Uh, well, uh, this I, I really surprised about the victory. Uh, um, I didn't get practice 20 minutes before or 15 minutes. Um, uh just, you know, uh, when I saw the grid, I said, okay, maybe it's going to be in, in green, green flag on the uh, race. Uh, I'm going to be on, I'm going to try to do my best to uh, stay, uh, save a fuel, basically, and try to do the maybe three stops, the full tanks, basically. But, um, I was involved in one incident. Actually, I really scared about the incident of uh, Gary. Gary, and uh, I spin myself. I spun myself, and uh, when I realized I coming in, I start to push it. I, I saw the people uh, slow down a lot, and uh, I, I I I was super strong in the. I, I feel super strong in in the with the old tires. So my strategy is try to. Be uh, try to do my best to catch the uh, Eric and and Jeff and I, I did. Actually, really surprised about the uh, Eric coming down. I don't know why. Anyways, so um, yeah. So it's basically stay strong, stay out of the trouble. Uh, try to don't touch the apron. That's another things so we need to uh, thinking because sometimes the car is. Uh, it's going to the wall, but sometimes going down. And when you touch just 
a little bit the the, the apron is the cards lose a lot. So yeah, I really surprised. I surprised to to win with five or four seconds behind. I don't know. And uh, yeah, but uh, was fun. Was fun. Very fun. And uh, it get me kick out what happened last season with uh, last five laps to go. I don't remember six laps to go when I Matt Watner won the race because I didn't change the, the tires. I was uh, third place, I don't remember. But uh, anyway, it uh, was fun. was fun. Yeah, you were indeed in the third position. We saw here tonight, it seemed like the biggest trouble spot for you drivers was off of turn two. Uh, we saw even a couple of times you get loose off that corner and have to catch the race car. What were you feeling as a driver? What was it about that particular corner that seemed to be giving drivers problems? My God, yeah. Um... It's really, I, I feel many times, it's not really, uh, I feel in the end, I think so, 10 laps to go or uh, 15 laps to go to the, the end of the tank, I feel that, that kind of thing. It's basically, uh, I leave the, left the throttle and before, the, before the corner and I put the fourth gear and I start to go with all the power on the track, so basically the track, the car is start to be more, uh, more faster or maybe more power on the on the back wheel, and I still feel that things are actually. In one moment, I fell in um, when I was behind the Jeff, and also when I was a leader, I did that, and uh, and yeah, it was scary moment. I, I almost lose lose it, and. Yeah, it's basically it's really strange things. It's like a, it's like a, it's going, but it's still straight. It's, it's weird. This is super weird, especially with this uh, 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 with the fanatic I have now. You can feel everything, and especially in, and for example, in turn in turn three, in turn three and four, actually you can feel that. It's mic is like a micro. This is really small, loose, and uh, the car is like uh, it's still straight. But anyway, so it's a really, really scary moment when I had in two or three times maybe on the on the on the on the track. But was uh, was uh, basically I I I went at home with the track with the car, so it was was okay. It just gives you an idea, folks. The drivers feel every nuance in the car, no matter how small. Luis, congratulations on your third win on the season. Uh, been a really good career year for you here. Uh, obviously, I know you want to get back to celebrating, but before we let you go, we're going to hand the microphone to you and let you do some victory lane thank you sponsors and, and shout outs. Yeah, sure. Uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Darren, my sponsor in England. The guy is an uh, English guy. So uh, the swing racing tournament for seven. He support me everything. Um, I want to say thank you also. Yes, TV, uh, HyperX, it's, it's in my car anyways. Um, I want to say thank you to my wife because we tomorrow we have a vacation. We need to go to uh, Quebec City to so five days when I get vacation on there. And she'd leave me to run in today. In between, we need to pack in the uh, old luggage. So he said, okay. You, Go to your business or you go to your stuff and don't worry, they do it later. I want to say thank you to my uh, my mom. She watched me in uh, in Chile. I say in Spanish for sure because uh, she doesn't. Uh, my father also doesn't speak in English. And uh, bien fácil la victoria. De verdad no tengo nada que que decir y nada para ustedes y nos vemos el próximo domingo. So uh, was strong and difficult race to to win today. So um let's see next uh sunday and i hope i don't know which race it is since next sunday but uh let's see i hope it's gonna get the win and and i hope really i hope it's gonna get more people on the track like uh rayvon and wagner and a couple of another one because uh, it's more it's with more people and more strong people it's more interesting so it's make it um, Make it more interesting uh, for the viewers, uh, for us, like a strategy when you go outside and battle with the with the victory with somebody strong. So I hope I hope the next uh, next uh, race is gonna be more people and um, more fun. Well, tonight at Gateway, the checkered flag belongs to Luis Gonzalez Nunez. 
up there at the front when it mattered the most at the very end to lead that final lap. Congratulations on the victory, Luis. Go and enjoy it and uh, enjoy your vacation. We'll see you at Motegi in two weeks' time. Oh, Motegi, I like it. Thank you so much, guy. That is going to conclude our coverage here tonight. I love the insight that we get from the drivers. We heard there he was able to feel the looseness, even the micro looseness of the car over in three and four. That's just something you don't see when you're watching from the spectator point of view. Also brought the great point that a lot of drivers are getting loose off of turn two because one doesn't consider the fact that the fuel that's in the tank, as it starts to evaporate away, it actually is taking weight in the back end of the car away and causing it to slide a lot more, making it lighter, giving them that loose sensation. So always cool when we're able to pick the brains of the driver and be able to get an inside look of what they're experiencing when they're in the cockpit of these race cars. Well, folks, next week, as mentioned, we are off for the Halloween weekend. Hope that everybody has a happy and safe Halloween. We will see you guys back here in two weeks' time when these drivers will be setting up the championship battle at Indianapolis. They're going to be at Twin Ring Motegi. Craig Forsyth trying to hold off Jeff Hysong. Tonight's winner, Luis Gonzalez Nunez. What will the points look like heading into that Motegi race? We hope that we will have you tuning in to find out in two weeks' time on Saturday, or make that Sunday rather, November the 6th, Green Flag will be scheduled to fly at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My thanks to Matthew Rodriguez for joining me here tonight for this one. For Matt Rod, I'm Seth Cole. We'll see you guys at Motegi in two weeks' time as you've been watching the Dark Horse Racing Series presented by Troy Lee Designs, courtesy of FRN, the Flat Out Racing Network. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of Flat Out Racing Network and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of Flat Out Racing Network and iRacing.com Motorsports Simulations. Flat Out Racing Network would like to thank you for your support and we hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast.